Hiya, welcome to GGKCS, a multi-generational podcast slash floss tube for fans of all things knitting, cross stitch, and geeky. I'm Cece and I'm so glad you're here today. Today is Sunday the 3rd of October 2021 and this is episode 462. I'd like to say a big welcome back. Love y'all to all returning viewers and a big hiya to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. Hope you enjoy the show. Um, if you're new here, um, my almost 22 year old kid Dammy joins me uh, for the podcast Floss Tube as often as possible. They are senior in university and um, are one of six actors in an upcoming play. And so their schedule is really, really busy. So um, they will pop on as often as possible. Um, okay, so one thing, thank you so much for your understanding of me not recording last week. I had to have a minor surgical procedure a week ago Friday and um, I thought I was going to be okay to record and I was not. So uh, thanks for your understanding and your um, healing vibes and good wishes. I appreciate that. <sighs> okay, I'm taking a deep breath. Um, I was going to wait and put this at the end, but I'm going to just go ahead and, and um, talk about it now. So as y'all know, uh, if you uh, have been watching for the last few months, um, I came out publicly that I'm queer, that I'm a lesbian, um, and that my um, ex and I had separated. And um, last week our divorce was finalized. So in the state of Washington, there's a 90 day waiting period. So um, it was finalized last week. So um, yes, we are officially divorced. And in that, um, I decided to change my name, my last name. Um, there's some things I won't go into around that, but um, for reasons that are my own, um, I wanted something new. And um, I rarely, rarely, rarely remember my dreams. It, I probably could count on one hand the dreams that I can remember. And um, a few months ago, I had a dream and I woke up laughing and remembered the dream because in the dream I had changed my name and I shared it with Dami and some close friends and my counselor and I made the decision to just do it. And so now I'm happy to introduce Cece Gilmore. Yes, Gilmore. Um, I am now officially a Gilmore girl. <laughs> Um, it, there are lots of things around that name that just mean a lot to me beyond just my love for the fandom. Um, it's about the bond that Dami and I have and that show is a part of it. Um, it's about the relationship between the mother and child in the show. Um, it's about community. It's about a lot of things. So, um, yeah, so I am officially Cece Gilmore now. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff I have to do to make the change everywhere in, in the world. Um, so while it is official legally, I have not changed it all the places yet. I have to wait for certified paperwork from the court to be able to change it with the Social Security Administration so that I can then can get a new driver's license so that I can open a bank account over on this side of the water instead of the one I was using um, from where I used to live. Um, but I didn't want to open a new bank account and then just a few months later have to get a new a bank card and update all that. So I just decided to wait. Um, I have to change it legally with my work and, you know, with insurance, to change it with doctors. So there's lots and lots of places it has to be changed, but officially legally, I am now CC Gilmore. So um, I will be, the, by the time this comes out tomorrow, I will have publicly shared this on social media. Tomorrow is my 44th birthday and, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying not to cry. I'm just overjoyed about starting um, this new chapter of my life with a new name and a new home and 
building a new community and um, being who I'm meant to be. So, okay, I'm gonna take a second and take a breath and then um, I've got a lot of stuff to talk to y'all about, especially since I didn't record last week. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. Coffee, it's important. Um, all right, let's talk about what is on my needles. Uh, in my um, kitty bag from Little Fish Stitches, I'm so close to being done, y'all. Um, I am working on Dammy's 22nd birthday socks. Dammy will be 22 on the 13th, so 10 days from now, uh, and these socks will be done by then. I am using my French Vanilla Cappuccino sock pattern that you can get on our website, javapearldesigns.com. There's a piece of pink's hair in the sock. I'm trying to pull it out. I have a feeling that it was knit in there, which is why it's not wanting. There we go got it to come out. Um, and as always, links to everything we talk about is in, uh, is on our show notes page. G show notes page. Obviously, I need to drink this coffee. GGKCS.com. Um, I used, I'm using US one and a half, two and a half mil needles, and I'm using Rock and String Creations Jitterbug Sock in the Meow colorway and Craft Slayer PDX Fingering Weight in a one of a kind gray colorway. I think I had finished the first sock when I talked to y'all a couple weeks ago. Maybe I hadn't. I, I honestly don't remember. So here is sock number one, and sock number two just needs the cuff, and it will be done. So as you can see, they're not the stripe colors don't match up, but the stripes match up as for the most part. So, um, and Dammy won't care. Um, so I need to use the gray and, um, do the cuff on this one. We have an ends, a silk block, and then they will be ready for Dammy's birthday. Um, hopefully the rest of Dammy's birthday presents will get here. I ordered Dammy's birthday present and they accidentally sent me the wrong order. They sent me somebody else's order. They're sending me a new one and hopefully it'll be here. If not, Dammy totally understands it's not a big deal, but I hope they're here for Dammy's birthday. Um, what I will be casting on when I finish this is socks for my bestie Katie's birthday. And I'm gonna be using this Uru yarn by Knit Crate. The colorway is Peachy Queen. It's 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 10% Stellina. Can you see the sparkle? There you go. My debate is whether I should do the toes, heels, and cuffs in the gray or just do the whole sock in this. I might just do the whole sock in this because it's got the sparkle and the gray doesn't have sparkle. So I may just do the whole, the whole sock, whole pair of socks in that. So uh, Katie loves pink as much as I do and so um, this is a good colorway for her. So I will be starting those as soon as I finish these. And that is everything that I'm knitting on. I've got this week's preemie hat on the needles, um, but it's just barely cast on. I'll actually probably knit on it a little bit later in the show. So, all right, but I have some FOs, so let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for my finished projects. And I have two this week because I didn't record last week. So I have two preemie hats. Um, number 38 and 39 for the year. Number 40 is on the needles. Uh, this is my top-down preemie hat pattern that you can get for free on our website, javapearldesigns.com. I do these on US 6's 4 mil needles. This one is Vitalana Ambient Worsted in the Michelangelo colorway, which is this, it looks gray, but it's blue. Um, I think it's just because it's next to the yellow. It looks a little more gray. And the yellow is Shepherd in the Cultured Pearls colorway. So this is the one I finished two weeks ago. And then the one I finished last Sunday is this one, and it is in the Bernay Softy Baby in the mint colorway and Red Heart Soft in the light gray heather colorway. So there we go, 38 and 39 for the year. And uh, I will work on number 40. And sneak peek, it's pink because for my birthday. So I decided to make it Okay, well, I've got more to talk about, so let's move on to the next segment. Mm -hmm. 
And now it's time for Floss Tube. Uh, first up, in my In Omnia Paratus Gilmore Girls Project Bag from uh, Black Needle Society, as well as Hebalian Zipper Pull. Um, just a reminder that I am a rep for the Black Needle Society, and I have a code where you can save 5% on your first box of a box-to-box -box subscription with the code Java Pearl 5 It doesn't work on the 6 and 12 month subscriptions as they have a discount built in and it's not valid on special edition boxes. Join the waitlist at theblackneedlesociety.com. All of that is linked in the show notes, ggkcs.com. I am working on the uh, pattern, excuse me, Autumn and Stars Hollow by uh, Katie Landis. This is from the first Gilmore Girls Retreat. And y'all, I am so close to being done. Um, oh, let me, let me unroll this so you can see. Ah, hold that thought. I have the, there's a snag at the bottom of the fabric and it's tearing, or not tearing, but like shredding it a little bit. Thankfully I had scissors sitting here at my desk. Okay, here we go. So I'm stitching this, I think it's on an 18 count. Yeah, an 18 count white Ada using mostly called for, although I did change out the week's dye works. And here is where I'm at, y'all. I think last night when I was working on this, I think this is at, I think it's like 84%. And I think I only have like three or four colors left to do. So I'm currently working on um, this gray. So I have more to do up there. Um, and of course this is Luke's and Dosi's Market. I love the little fruit and veggie stand right there. This is so pretty. And I cannot wait to get the next pattern because I will be doing it um, like this. So it'll be spring, summer, autumn, winter. So all four pieces will connect. And this is a 95 by 95 pattern and I love it so much and I cannot wait to be done with it. And then I'm gonna be sad because I'm gonna to have to wait for the next one. Okay, let me get this wrap back up. Oh, and look, did y'all see Kirk and Kirk and Cat Kirk? How cute is that? Okay, so let me put this back in here so that I can show you my 25-7 project. <laughs> which is right here in the uh, my Winnie the Pooh Knit Run Dig project bag. I am working on Edinburgh Castle by Carolina Stitchery. It's massive, 624 by 426. Um, all the details for everything that I am using are in the show notes, ggkcs.com. So, um, okay, let me show you. Okay, I think I did like 37 stitches yesterday. I'm gonna tell you about that in a minute. So subtract 37 stitches from this. So when I finished, when I on Friday, when I had finished out of the week, I was at 36,687 stitches out of 265,824 complete, 13.801% complete. When I finish this box right here, I'll be done with page seven of 60. So I think I talked about in my last video that I was, since I'm working remotely now 90% of the time, that I was gonna see about trying to do 25 minutes a day on this instead of 25 stitches. Um, and what I ended up working out, I can't remember what I told y'all, I can't remember yesterday. So anyway, uh, I may have said all this already. If I did, you're in here again. Um, what I decided to do was a minimum of 25 stitches, but if at, when I get those 25 stitches, if it has not been 25 minutes, I will continue stitching to 25 minutes. Unless it's like a day where it's like, all I can get in today is 25 stitches and that's totally fine. So every day I'm gonna have a minimum of 25 stitches done. But some, so like, I think I've been doing the 25 minutes. I think I've done it like every day since I last recorded. Um, and so there's not been a single day where I haven't gotten more than 25 stitches. I think like my lowest was maybe like 29. It was a very, very confetti heavy day. 
Um, but I've gotten up like over 50 on some days. So um, we're knocking some days off of that 22 years that was gonna take me to finish this if I only did 25 stitches a day. So there we go. Um, I don't know, it's it's really hard to take this all out off the Q-snap because there's so much fabric. So I don't know if I'll take it out when I finish page seven because I still have plenty of room to work. Like I usually like when I get maybe over here somewhere is when I tend to move the, move the Q-snap. So I may not um, pull it out when I finish page seven. But. So there's that. Um, and that is what I've been stitching on. I'm debating what I'm gonna stitch next once I finish Ottoman Stars Hollow. Um, I might pick up the I Wish You Lived Next Door to stitch for my bestie Katie. Or I might pick up the, I got, I got this really cute October um, pattern with some floss and fabric um, from a de-stash that Michelle Bindi Stitchy did. And so I might work on that. I'm not sure. I haven't decided. Okay, there is cross-stitch content later, more in the show, Yummies up next. And uh, I still have a lot more to talk about. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show, yummies. Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. My big yummy oh, is that I am opening the Trick or Treat 31 Days of Halloween box from Black Needle Society. So uh, over on YouTube, if you're not watching this on YouTube, over on YouTube every day I'm doing a short Vlogoween video, like five minutes or less, where I'm opening the day's uh, item and um, answering a question about autumn. And I'm enjoying seeing some of y'all are answering the question in the comments as well, in the YouTube comments. So that's so much fun. Um, I mean, you should watch simply for the fact that I am wearing this headband that is a witch's hat uh, that has pumpkins with googly eyes and a ghost. Um, I mean, and I have ones that light up for Christmas. So, thus far, we have opened three days. This is the scratch-off card, which I've learned um, what worked today. I pre-scratched the card with a coin and didn't read it until I opened the item. Okay? Um, so, that's what worked for me. And, um, yeah. So, day one in this cute little bag is a planchette three inch square. So it was designed by Doodle by Meg, Doodle by Meg and then the Black Needle Society did it on their Glowforge. And so what this is, so let's see, let's pretend like this is your fabric. And say you wanna have a three inch border around your project, whatever corner you're starting from, you put this in the corner and this is where you'll start because that'll leave a three inch border. If you want a two and a half inch border, I actually flip it upside down. Two and a half inch border, I put the dot in the corner. And that's a two and a half inch border. And this dot right here is a two inch, which is what I typically do is a two inch. I have one of these, I think with coffee on it or something. But these are a great, great tool for figuring out where to start um, your project um, to make sure you have a good border. Okay, day two is in, how fun is this bag? Apparently there's, I haven't, like I counted the the pa parcels to make sure they were all there, that's what they told us to do, but I didn't really look. So apparently there's four bags with different uh, classic characters on it. So day two was from Stitch Life Magazine and it is an 18 count blood spatter fabric. It is um, custom printed, it cannot be washed. I love that they finished it around the edges. And this is the fabric for the first of four um, kits in the, in the box. So we'll get the pattern, we'll get the fabric, and we'll get something that is part of the pattern, whether it's floss or like finishing supplies or whatever. So today we got the, day three, the floss for this um, pattern 
fancy floss. It is from Fiberlicious. It's hand dyed silk, 40 single strands, 48 yards, color fast. So we got bronze olive, fossil. I love the, oops, go this way, CC this way. I love the variegation in that. Red Bordeaux, Woods Witch, and Creepsicle. So let's see, let me, I did this earlier in my video and it helped really made you be able to see how this floss is gonna look on this fabric. There we go. Isn't that pretty? So tomorrow we will get the pattern for that. Um, I feel like I know potentially who designed the pattern. We will see if I'm correct in my guess. So, um, so as I said, I'm opening these every day over on, um, on YouTube and, um, I will try to get them up before work every day, but I can't promise that. So it, you might get them in the evening. I am opening them in the morning uh, and recording, but sometimes I run out of time to get them up before I have to start working. Um, so, I just because I'm opening them because I don't want to get spoiled over on the social medias. So, um, yes. So the other thing I want to show you is I follow on Instagram Morgan Harper Nichols, and she does these beautiful, inspirational, artistic pieces. And um, she posted this one, and I was like, oh my gosh, I want a print of that. So I, bought, I ordered the print. It says, hope is not wishful thinking. Hope is the audacity to believe after everything I've been through, there is more ahead of me. I love it. I love it. And um, it's on it's on high quality paper, like uh, cardstock type paper. And I love it. So I bought that. I also got this sticker to put on my water bottle. I am making the brave decision to keep going anyway. And then, shh, don't tell. I also got a birthday card for my bestie, Katie. It says, make art, make time to listen, make dinner, make a friend, make yourself laugh, make peace, make a playlist of all the good old school songs, make room in your schedule just to try something new, make room on your desk for your favorite book, make noise about what is lovely and true, make a memory, make the most of every day, no matter what comes your way, make it a wonderful year for you, wishing you the happiest of birthdays. So, um, oh, it was printed here in Seattle. If you're hearing a buzzing, that's my dryer. I'm washing my sheets. All right, that's everything I think I have for um, yummies today. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the next segment. Okay, now we're going to talk about what we're reading, watching, and listening to. So, um, a reminder about our RAL read along, which is a challenge for you to read 15 minutes a day every day. I don't care what you're reading, as long as you're reading, audiobooks do count. So, there's um, finish lines thread in the Facebook group, as always, links to everything at ggkcs.com. So, um, during this last week, though, we finished up the July, August, September. Rowl. So by participating in the seasonal rows, you earn entries into the year-long challenge and at the beginning of 2022, which is only three months away, how? We will draw for three grand prize winners out of the um, all the entries. Um, so we had eight people who read all 92 days of July, August, and September. I've already sent them their goodies, but I want to... Uh, give them a shout out and also four of them won uh, any one of our ebooks. So the people who read all 92 days are Andrea J, Betty H S, Brittany M, Jane S, Penny G S, Roberta B, 
Silver D, and Tyra J. Great job, y'all. So I did random number generator and was like, random number, give me a random number between one and whatever. And I did it four times. So if you are one of these winners, I need you to go to javapearldesigns.com, click on patterns, and then click on ebooks and pick which ebook you want. Send us an email at, um, I can never remember our email address. Dammy always has to say it. ggkcspodcast at gmail.com ggkcspodcast at gmail.com um, with which ebook you would like and I will send it to you. Uh, you have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. So the four winners are Betty HS, Brittany M, Jane S, and Roberta B. Congrats. Um, and then we had one person who uh, finished in the 61 to 87 days of the 92 days. Um, that is Kathy C., and Kathy, you also won any one of our single patterns. So um, go to javapearldesigns.com patterns and pick a pattern and email me ggkcspodcast at gmail.com. Okay, reading. Y'all, there is a lot of reading because um, it's been two weeks and um, I had, just because of the recovery from my surgery, I had a lot of reading time. I also had a lot of TV time, but I had a lot of reading time. So I read a lot. Okay, I'm trying to figure out where to start on this pre-me hat. So I can knit while I talk to y'all. Here we go. Okay, so I'm continuing to read uh, for counseling both The Body Keeps the Score by Vessel van der Kolk and Leaving the Fold by Marlene Winnell. Um, for my Unashamed Love Collective book club, we are reading for October, Post Traumatic Church Syndrome by Reba Riley. I'm actually listening to it because my library, none of my libraries had it as a ebook. Uh, they only had it as an audiobook. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll listen to an audiobook. The author reads it and it, she is so funny. I'm really enjoying it. I'm actually like, I think. 80% done with it already and it's only the 3rd of October so um it's a really easy read memoir style and um so I'm enjoying that I also listened to Broken Horses by Brandy Carlisle which is a memoir and it was really cool I, the reason I decided to listen to it instead of uh actually like read the ebook is because there was music associated with each chapter so they the um audiobook had songs for every single chapter and so I really really enjoyed that a lot. I um, picked up both books that are out by Young Pueblo. Um, I follow Young on Instagram and he's another one that does um, inspirational um, and affirm affirmations and uh, such. And so I picked up both of his books. I'm reading, the first one is Inward, and I'm just reading, like, uh, it's essentially like a poem or a quote or whatever a day. Um, so it will take me a while to read it, but um, I wanted to, like, like, focus on each one. You know what I mean? Okay, and then fiction-wise, whew, I read I Kissed a Girl by Jeanette Alexander. It was cute. I enjoyed it. I read the second and third books in the series I had started by Jenny Han. It's Not Summer Without You and We'll Always Have Summer. They were okay. They were okay. I was recommended. Um, so my online book club has mid-month just like kind of social get-togethers. Um, they're still on Zoom and everything, but we call them club book club. I don't we just do. And anyway, at the last one, uh, one of the people in the book club recommended Looking for Alaska by John Green. Oh my goodness, y'all. I, I don't even have words to describe it. It was so well written. It was so um, heart-wrenching, emotional. I cried. Um, it's about a group of kids at a, um, boarding school and something traumatic happens and we are, we 
the first half of the book like counts down like 130 days before. And then the second half of the book is like 57 days after, but it's like a countdown and then a count up. Wow. It was, it was very, very powerful. Um, I read The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. Uh, that one, no, that's not the one. It's the next one that creeped me out. The Last Thing He Told Me. I don't honestly remember what that one was about because I've read so much, y'all. I don't know. Uh, the one that creeped me out was A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee, which was also at a boarding school. And it was spooky, and I had to read it in the daytime because it was scaring me. I mentioned that in my vlogging, I think, yesterday. I read book number 53 in the In Death series by J.B. Robb, Forgotten in Death, and it was so good. I'm so sad that I'm caught up on this series because I'm like, I just want to like, because they were so good. And then what I'm reading now is book number one in the Lady Sherlock series by Sherry Thomas. It's called A Study in Scarlet Women. Um, I've only just started it. Um, I'm only just a little bit of a ways into it. Okay, watching. I'm not telling you everything I'm watching, but some of the, um, some of the, oh, I finished watching that one uh, last night. Um, some of the things that I am watching are uh, Law and Order Special Victims Unit Season 23 and episodes for the That's Messed Up and SVU podcast, Not Safe for Children. Very comedic, but also very heart-wrenching uh, as they talk about the true crimes that inspire the episodes. I'm re-watching Season 1 of Gilmore Girls with the I Am All In with Scott Patterson podcast. We are nearing completion of Season 1 already. I think there's only like a couple more episodes. So we are nearing there. I finished watching Nine Perfect Strangers uh, on Hulu. Whew. Wow. Yeah, that one. It was based on a book and it's about uh, a group of nine strangers at a, um, at like a wellness spa and things happen. Nicole Kidman's in it. Melissa McCarthy's in it. It's a, it was really good. I also, I'm watching still Only Murders in the Building, uh, which is also a Hulu one, uh, about a true crime podcast after these neighbors um, all discover they are true crime enthusiasts and there was a murder in the building. Thus the name. Um, I watched, I binge watched while I was recovering at the suggestion of my bestie Katie, Good Girls on Netflix. It is so... It's so funny. It's like totally like the ride or die Thelma and Louise type um, relationships. Uh, these three women, two sisters and their friend, um, and they get involved in some criminal activity. And it is so funny. It is so funny. Uh, but also so like there's a lot of drama in it, too. So um, I actually finished watching season three last night. I'm watching season 15 of Murdoch Mysteries, watching season 19 of NCIS, and season 6 of The Masked Singer. And as always, listening to My Favorite Murder, random Spotify playlists. I'm enjoying Brandi Carlisle's new album. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I think that is everything for what I am reading, watching, and listening to. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for our September, October, November Artistic Autumnal Owl. This is a, um, a long that runs from the 1st of September through the 30th of November. It's for any project you knit, crochet, weave, stitch, weave, spin, stitch, or sew that you can convince us is related to autumn. Your fallback is you made it in the autumn. That's totally fine. No whips are allowed, so you have to start your project uh, no earlier than September 1st and finish it no later than the 30th of November. Um, every project that you knit, crochet, weave, or spin must be at least 20 yards, 18.3 meters. Um, and you post it in the Facebook group FO thread and that's one entry into the giveaways. If your project is not at least that yardage, meterage, you need to group it in one single photo uh, with other projects that together total that meterage. Uh, at least that meterage 
uh, and that will be one entry into the giveaways. For stitching and sewing projects, we leave it to your best judgment. If you want our official ruling, email us. Feel free to poly dip in other owls as long as it fits in with the rules. That's totally fine with us. Um, there is a Google form linked in our Facebook group. It's also in the show notes where you can fill it out and tell us what crafts that you do so that if you were drawn as a prize winner, we can make sure it's a, a prize that you'll use. If you don't fill it out, you get what you get. Um, prizes. We'd like to say a huge thank you to all of our prize donors. Um, the prizes are up on the screen right now. If you'd like to donate a prize, you can email us at ggkcspodcast at gmail.com. And we have a new prize this, this week uh, to announce. So, but I'm going to tell you all the prizes because it's the first podcast of the month. So first up, we have Audine Wools by Knit Crate Mellow. We have two screen, two skeins of Cordial. Two winners will each win one skein. We have a Wooden Cat Owl Needle Minder donated by Lori and Pumpkin Kid Turkey Needle Minder. We have a Try to Relax Cross Stitch Kit donated by Lori. We have a Knitting Wrist Yarn Holder. We have a skein of La Brabus Light Alpaca in the Dogwood Berry Color Way. And our new prize is a knitting pattern. It's the line where the sky meets the sea shawl donated by the designer Windswept Knits. Thank you so much to our um, prize donors. We appreciate y'all very much. Love. You have to be a member of our Facebook group uh, to participate in the OWL. If you want to post on social media, the hashtag is hashtag GGKCS Autumn 21. Sorry, I need a drink of water. The um, FO thread will be locked the morning of December 1st and winners will be drawn on the next podcast following that. As with all of our um, alongs and prizes and giveaways, you have 30 days from the date the podcast announcement goes live announcing the winners to claim your prize or you forfeit it. Um, and um, speaking of that, we still do have some outstanding prize winners from both the ninth Potiversary giveaway and the summertime and the living is easy, Al. And this week, I think it's on Wednesday is your deadline. So if you participated in either of those, you need to claim your prizes or you're going to forfeit it. Um, and then we'd like to give a shout out to the people who finished projects in the last two weeks. They are Emily S., Jane S., Sarah G., Tracy O., and Tyra J. Great job, everybody. Keep working on those projects. Get them posted and you might be a prize winner. All right. Uh, we're ready to move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeks, the part of the show where you ask us questions and we try to answer them. This week's question was originally asked and answered in 2018. Sally asks, do you have any special traditions for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas slash New Year's? So Halloween, no, not really. Um, we love the month of October so much. Dammy and I, both of our birthdays are in October. Um, and... Um, I love autumn. I would live in autumn year round if I could. Um, I love the the crisp air and being able to wear shawls and sweaters and hand knit socks and um, love the colors. And so I tend to focus more on those things. Uh, pumpkin, of course, all the pumpkin stuff. Uh, I have pumpkin spice in my coffee right now. Um, Thanksgiving. Um, our tradition is to get up the morning of Thanksgiving and have like cinnamon rolls or something like that and decorate for Christmas while we watch the Macy's parade. Uh, and then we have our Thanksgiving meal like mid afternoon and just spend time together. Christmas, um, our tradition is, and I don't know, some of these traditions might change, you know, with me being, uh, living on my own for the first time in my life. And, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, but, um, uh, Christmas on Christmas Eve, we typically have like a snack dinner with, you know, like <sighs> smoked sausage and cheese and chips and dips and sweets and cookies and things like that and then um we read out of scripture the story of christ's birth and then we open christmas gifts uh that are under the tree on christmas eve 
uh, we are very, um, we are, we don't do a lot of presents. Um, and, uh, actually a tradition is for the kids. So for my niece and nephews, uh, I will send to them and for Dammy, uh, book books under the tree. Um, and we, we do one present at a time and we watch the person open and just really take time to be grateful versus um, just a mad onslaught of a ton of presents. That's what works for us. No judgment on anybody else that you do what is, is right for you and your family. But this is what works for us. And then Christmas morning, we open stockings that have other stuff in them. Um, and it's, you know, you, there's usually like candy and, um, you know, other gifts, you know, smaller, small gifts, um, that, um, yeah. So that's what we do for that. New Year's, no real traditions. Um, yeah, no, not really. Um, yeah. So that's what we do that, you know, and like I said, that totally could change with, you know, me being living on my own now. And, um, you know, Dammy's in their last year of university. And so don't know what's ahead for them. Um, but I will definitely spend as much time with them as possible, um, for as long as possible. So, um, all right. So thank you so much for that question, Sally. If anybody has a question for us, you can either go to the Ask the Geeks thread in the Facebook group and post it or post it in the YouTube comments uh, of any of our videos. And thus far, there's not been anything that we haven't been willing to answer. So feel free to post uh, or feel free to ask. <laughs> so, all right. Well, let's move on to the next segment. And with that, we made it to the end of the show. Yay. Um, thank you so much for sticking in there with me. Um, announcements, uh, as usual, we are uh, continuing to co-host the Pride Owl, the Pride Along, that started back in May and runs through the end of June 2022. If you go to our website, ggkcs.com, there is a link to a YouTube video that explains everything. Our hashtag is hashtag ggkcspridealong2122. Um, we'd like to say a huge thank you, love y'all, to everyone who supports the podcast, no matter how it is you do, you support us. Um, you are all part of our community and we're so grateful for each of you. Uh, did want to say thank you to those of you who support us monetarily because we were able to uh, get a new Mac Mini, which is what we edit the podcast on and process the, the files on. Uh, we had been saving for that and then I got a bonus at work so I was able to kind of combine the two and get a new Mac Mini which the one we were using was like seven years old and so it was really really slow really really lagging it has surprised me so much how fast this new one is so uh, thank you for supporting the podcast financially and helping us be able to continue to make the podcast if you would like to support us financially, there's several ways. Uh, one is, pay well, the first ones are Patreon and YouTube Join, which is where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives and you earn rewards based on the levels you donate at. Uh, if you want to know more or sign up, you can go to patreon.com slash ggkcs or click on the join button under any of our YouTube videos. If you'd like to make a one-time donation, there is a PayPal button in the sidebar of our website. We are bookshop.org affiliates. Uh, bookshop is an online bookstore with a mission to financially support local independent bookstores. If you buy a, sh a book from our shop, we earn a commission as well as local independent bookstores earn money from the purchase. I do make a shelf every episode of like the books that we talk about, but you can buy anything from our shop and it will, and it will count towards it. Um, our site is bookshop.org slash shop slash ggkcs. And we are amazon.com.co.uk and .ca affiliates. If you're going to shop on Amazon, if you go to our site first and click on the appropriate link uh, for your country and then do your shopping as normal, we earn a little money back based on what you purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's a great way to support the podcast by doing something you were going to do anyway. Um, as always, you can find everything about the episode and where to find us at ggkcs.com there there are links to everywhere else we are online uh youtube apple podcasts instagram facebook facebook group etc 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 
And with that, we're going to say goodbye. Uh, remember to stay tuned after the credits for a video of Pinky, Pink Pearl. Um, and um, I hope you have a great week ahead. I'm excited to be starting my 44th or my, my next year of life as you know, turning 44 tomorrow. Today, if you're watching this, the day it goes live. My birthday's on October the 4th. Uh, and it was always, we always said it, 10-4 good buddy, like the truckers, you know, they, on their um, CB radios, 10-4 good buddy. Um, and I, I found out this uh, a couple weeks ago at work that there's another person in my office that has the same birthday as me, and they also did the 10-4 good buddy thing. So... It doesn't work overseas, though. It doesn't work in the UK because it's 410 over there. So they didn't know what I was talking about. Anyway, I um, hope you have a great week ahead and happy crafting. Make sure you get your vaccine. Make sure you're wearing your masks. Stay safe. Um, we lost a family member to COVID in the last couple of weeks. And... Um, Yeah, the only way we're going to end this is by all doing, not just for yourself, but for others. So, all right. Happy birthday to me. Happy crafting. Hi, I'm Cece Gilmore, and I hope you have a great week ahead. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. All right. And don't forget to watch Vlogween over on YouTube. All right. Bye. Oh my goodness, it's a princess in the tower. Pink Pearly, Pink Pearly, let down your tail. That was the computer deleting what was in the trash bin. <laughs> Pink. Hi, baby. You are a pretty girl.